Welcome to Rock Your Reinvention, the show for high achieving career women who refuse to settle for mediocrity and aren't afraid to take bold action. This is a place where you can authentically show up, where every dream and goal can be validated and achieved. Hi, I'm your host, Karen Freeland, a certified life reinvention coach, speaker, and award-winning author. I'm here to give you the tips, tools, and strategies to help you shift your mindset, build your confidence, and take meaningful actions so you can rock your reinvention. Ready to go from stuck to thriving? Let's go. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Rock Your Reinvention. I am super pumped for today's episode because I have brought one of my amazing clients on to have a discussion with us just to share a little bit about her journey. We're going to get real. We're going to tell you about the ups, but we're going to tell you about some of the downs too because any reinvention has some challenges and things that we have to work through. So we're going to touch on all those things, where she's going, what she's looking to ultimately accomplish, at least at this phase of life. And I think you're going to all leave incredibly inspired to go design a life that you truly love and can't wait to wake up and live every single day. So welcome to the show, Melissa. Thank you. This is so fun, Karen. And what a treat to get to talk to you two days in a row this week. I know we just had our session yesterday, so this is really fun. Yeah. Although we we end up talking so many times anyway on Voxer <laughs> throughout the I know. week. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. It kind of feels like we get to chat a lot, but this is gonna be really fun because we really get to dig into some of your stories. So before we jump into all the questions, and just by the way, she knows some of the questions that I'm going to ask because I didn't want to blindside anything, but I don't know her answers or responses. So this is going to be totally organic. I, I haven't told her, hey, say this or say that. It's totally her words, and we're just going to share that openly and authentically today. So let's start with a little intro, who you are, what you do, tell us a little bit about you, and maybe a fun fact for us. You got it. Right now, my day-to-day -day is security compliance for a cybersecurity SaaS company. And before that, I was director of IT for a small business in my local town. I live in the mountains of Colorado with my husband and our dog. And at the time of this recording, it's mid-May, the snow has mostly <laughs> melted. Yay. So that means the trails are getting dry and we're able to get out and run do some trail running. And then when I come home from trail running, if I can meditate in the sunshine, that's my dream morning and my fun fact. I love that. Meditation is so good. I started doing, um, not too long ago, actually, I've been having a ton of insomnia because I'm in the perimenopause phase. So I'm getting older mm. and like, you just have these weird arousals in the middle of the night where you're, you just can't sleep. So I've started doing this like Christian app and I meditate on scripture before I go to bed. It has been a game changer for me. Half the time I fall asleep during the meditation and then it just like eases me right in to sleeping. So I'm a big fan of the nighttime meditation lately. I love that. I bet it gets you just calmed down from the day because I have a similar evening practice where it's just nice to set your mind, get it calmed down, get it ready for bed in a good headspace yeah. before going to bed instead of having racing thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I used to always look at my phone right before bed and like check work emails <sighs> and it would just send me into a tizzy. I'm like, why do I do this? But, ugh. Old workaholic habits. Thankfully, those are gone. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that I love is you have really been on a self-transformation journey for a while now. And for anyone listening, that is just something for you to key in on. It's a journey, right? These changes don't happen overnight. They come with intentional living and intentional practices. And I know that you have been really diligent over the past few years of trying to figure out what brings you joy and fulfillment. So I would love you to take us back to this moment where you're in your career, you're the director of technology, and you realize like this is not the role for me. I didn't sign up for this. How did I get here? So tell us about what was happening, what you were feeling, and that decision that you ultimately came to. You are so right that it is nothing that happened overnight. This has 
reinvention. <laughs> I'm probably going into year three and I still think it's going to continue iterating yeah. <laughs> all across time and months. So going to the director role, ultimately I realized it was time for a change when I was having more bad days than good days. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of my measuring stick of like, I, I need to make a change. At this point, I was a single woman show for our tech department. I was the tech department <laughs> doing help desk and onboarding, offboarding of employees, vendor management, project management, infrastructure, security, like you name it. If it had to do with technology, a piece of it lived in my world, which almost everything has to do with technology now. And I was just drowning and could not catch my breath. I was the firefighter on call 365 days a year, 24 seven. And I realized this was not sustainable for me to live. And if yeah. I was going to be an enjoyable human being for my husband, for my parents and my friends, I needed to make some changes there. Yeah. And I mean, that is a recipe for burnout, right? Like you just get to that point where you're so exhausted, you have no breaks because it is, IT is 24 seven. If there's no one else to take the calls, what do you do? Totally. And it was such a mixture of burnout and then the re- almost rebranding myself for figuring out when I hit the point that like, I can't do this anymore. I can't be the single person running our tech department. So I did have a few options where I could change jobs entirely, you know, change mm -hmm. companies, get a new position. I could stay at the same company, but change roles, which was an option, or I could keep going in the current role and try to upskill myself, try to harness some more knowledge, maybe grow the team a little bit and go that direction. And so we can get into maybe kind of the decision yeah. tree. Of what yeah, that I like, think that but... would be really helpful because I bet there's a okay. people listening right now who are like, oh my gosh, this sounds so familiar. I'm in a job. I don't love it. I feel stuck. But they really haven't done that brainstorming yet for themselves to figure out, okay, what are all the options and what are the pros and cons of each option? Absolutely. And there's always multiple options. Like I have yes. learned that from you. There's always multiple options available. And I was also lucky at the time because, you know, you and I, we weren't working together at this time. Um, so I was lucky that I did have, you know, a manager who was walking me through some of these options. And the first option was, hey, keep going in your role and dive deeper into firewalls, learn how to configure switches, learn how to, you know, do all these other different, very technical jobs. And I was like, yes, I could go take a course in firewalls. I could take a course in cybersecurity, but that was not the career path that I wanted. I didn't yeah. want to spend my days working on firewalls and switches. <laughs> so that kind of vetoed it vetoed that path. I was like, all right, that's not going to be it. So then to transfer internally, it was going to be about a 30% salary cut for this new position, which I was excited about the new position that it would give me something different to work on, but it would also have, you know, removed me from our leadership team. And I really liked being with that group of people and getting to learn from them. And then the salary cut what I wasn't excited about, obviously. Right. And I think that because I was the one having done help desk and all things tech for years before this, it was going to be really hard to rebrand myself while I stayed at the same company. Mm -hmm. I think even if I had switched positions, people would still come to me for tech help. And I was still going to be that go-to person because then you'd have to train all of the employees and say, hey, she's not in that position anymore, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I just found it to be an uphill battle to rebrand myself and stay at the same company. So that was left me with change companies, change positions. Yeah. And so you did. And you did what some people might call a step back. You went into a uh, individual contributor compliance role. So tell us about that. 
Yeah, I was looking around for jobs and fortunately I had a connection with a guy who worked at my current company and he said, hey, we've got a a role opening up. I think you would be a good fit. It was going to be a brand new position for me. And so, like I said, this is my uh, security compliance position that I'm in now. I had never done anything in the compliance world. So I did the interviews, a few of them across few weeks and I decided to go for it because I knew I loved software and this was a SaaS company, well-known, well-developed, and it was eight times larger than my previous company. So it felt like a good step to get more experience and get more skills developed. Yeah. And how has it been stepping into that role and having more freedom, more time in your day? Like just paint that picture for us a little bit. Oh my gosh. It has been incredible. It's really interesting though, to see how things change because coming off of burnout, I was fortunate. I could take two weeks off in between jobs, which was incredible. I feel really lucky that I put in my two weeks finished those, finished my last day, then had a two week break in the fall here. So that was great. But I was still, you don't recover from burnout in two weeks. Um, So I was really intentional in the fall of like, I'm here, I'm learning, I'm getting onboarded. I am meeting a bunch of people. I was really intentional to reach out beyond my team to meet new people and just also observe how they do it. Because like I said, going from a company of 100 to 800, there's so many more processes and options and things to do. And so that first few months was truly just like a breath of fresh air because all I had to do was get onboarded and acclimated and start learning security compliance. Yeah. Oh, it's so amazing. And I'm glad that you mentioned burnout not being cured in two weeks. And I think a lot of us think we're just going to go on vacation and we'll be rejuvenated and we can come back and hit the ground running. And it it mm-hmm. takes a long time to overcome burnout. Yes, of course. Yeah. You can't just take a three-day weekend. Be like, I'm recovered. I'm rested. I have found too. It's also equally important to find that rest day to day. Because you can't just wait for rest to come on the weekends, or you can't just wait for rest to come on the next holiday. It has to be built in to your days. Yes, and schedule it. Like, there's nothing wrong with putting time in your calendar for that. Do you do that? Yes, I'm such a fan of scheduling the rest. And oh, there's a great quote about um, it's something, and I'll probably butcher it, but we can maybe link it if you want to. Yeah. Is, Instead of, have I done enough work to earn my rest versus have I rested enough to do my most important work? Mm. I love that because it reminds me that my best work comes when I am filled up and rested where I'm compassionate and patient and honestly more driven because I'm way more intentional about what I want to get done when I'm not running on a hamster wheel. Yes. I was so, I think one of the big things for me, I was so short tempered when I was burnt out. Like I had Mm -hmm. zero patience, not for my kids, not for my dog, not for my husband, not for my coworkers. I mean, everyone just got the brunt of it. And I look back now and I'm like, I feel so terrible. I behaved that way, but it was like, I didn't even know it was happening. If that makes sense. Cause I was so deep in the burnout. Mm-hmm. It just felt like my everyday normal. That makes total sense. I can re- like, I can relate. I'm glad you said that because it's true. Yeah. Like, yes, I can relate to that. Yeah. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit. Beginning of 2024, you're in this new security compliance role. You're overcoming your burnout. You're starting to feel good. You've got more space in your day. What was happening that made you want to reach out to me, a a coach, and start exploring new opportunities? Okay, this was so fun. And I maybe it was kind of the beginning of the year. And now that I actually had come January, I was about 120 days into the new role. And that was when I was catching my breath. I'm like, okay, I 
am developing who I want to be and what my days, what I want my days to look like. I've been able to rebrand myself and reposition myself. And so I was learning so much, even in, of course, in the first 90 days, your learning is just drinking from a fire hose, skyrocketing. And I was feeling like as getting such a good foundation in cybersecurity and getting to work with all these different specialized teams of very smart people. And I loved it, but I was still looking at the long game Mm -hmm. and finding enjoyment day to day in terms of what I work related day to day. Like, am I excited to sit down at my computer? And I wanted to marry the two of, is this, you know, how do I get to my long-term goals and how do I keep the short, you know, the days and the weeks enjoyable? And so that's when I kind of started looking at around at career coaches. I fully believe in having a team or a board of directors around me. I know we've kind of mentioned this. I have my husband and my parents, my brother and sister-in-law, and they're on my board. And I've got a therapist and she's on the board too. And I always think like people use fitness trainers and health coaches to uplevel their health. So I wanted to expand my team and add a career coach to my board. Yeah. How has that experience benefited you since we've been working together? It's been so good. It's just so fun and so helpful. I think everybody should have someone where they can go to for questions and encouragement and a sounding board and someone who's, you know, you're not in the trenches necessarily with me because you've you've done this, you have a wider perspective, you hear more stories, you hear different experiences. And me, I still consider myself at the beginning of my career. And I can learn so much at a much quicker pace by talking to you and people who have like, oh, well, we've seen it done this way, or we've seen this work really well, and things like that. So getting the extra perspective and experience, but not to mention just getting energized and dreaming on the calls with you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we have thought about, like you said, the long game, right? Like what do I want my Mm -hmm. career ultimately to look like and how do we start to back into that? So what are the roles and the skills and the capabilities and the things that you need to add to your resume so that you can ultimately achieve your highest goals in your career. And one of those things that you identified was a real interest in product management. Yes. Yeah, just share maybe a little bit about this, like how that came about and some of the strategies that we put together for you to unpack and see and explore this area of interest for yourself. Great question. I think, and it's always iterating too, which I love. And it's going to be so fun to see how it's iterated in two months versus back in February. Like it's already changed so much and the iterations are really fun. And it reminds me that nothing is set in stone, that we can always be changing and pivoting and adapting. But I leaned so much towards product because I, you know, thought back to what I really enjoyed about being director. And a piece of that was building this custom software for clients and it gave the company competitive advantage. Nobody else was offering this software. And I got to work with this developer out of Ukraine who I still have FaceTime calls with him and his family to this day because we just built such a good relationship. It felt like a great team and it was fun to make a difference and offer something that people enjoyed and that people said, I find value in this. And so I love working at the SaaS company because we're making a difference in people's lives. I mean, I think personally about software and apps that I love to use. I love building my own system. I love making things efficient and I love them to be enjoyable. And so that's where I was like, man, if I can play a part in putting out enjoyable SaaS products that make people's lives more efficient and they, you know, the dream, like they wake up and they're excited to use it, that is 
like goal achieved. That is so much fun for me to be building something and then problem solving it ultimately of what's the problem? What are we trying to solve? And let us solve your problem. I love that. And I hear so much passion in your voice when you talk about it. Like you just, you're smiling, you're excited. Like this, this really is something that you enjoy and that gives you energy and excites you. And I think everyone wants that, but there's so many people that are still struggling to figure out what that is. And we've done a lot of exploration together, right? Like there's been a lot Mm -hmm. of discovery calls that you've had with other people in product to really flesh this out and make sure that this isn't just something you think looks cool from the outside, like really talk to people who are in the trenches and get that Mm -hmm. firsthand knowledge so that you can get all, we always call it the data points, right? Get all the data points together to really fill out this picture and know that, yes, this is something that I want to pursue. Oh my gosh. Thinking about the data points, that skill that you gave me was so game changing because I, there's no need to fear the conversations. You know, we were talking about having various conversations and internally, like, Hey, do you think, you know, what does the career growth look like for me in this role? And do you think I'd be a good fit for the product team maybe? And that's a data point. There's nothing to fear. I think if I wasn't working with you, I would have been kind of nervous to be like, well, what if they say, no, you're not going to be a good fit for that role. Then what do I do? Like six, the ship is sunk (laughs) in feeling. And you were like, no, 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 the ship is not sunk. It's a data point. Luckily, that did not happen. But these were just like the fears that we talked through before the conversations were happening. And then the other lesson that, uh, of course, I'm still learning. I think I'm going to be learning it for years, decades, probably, is about patience, about you don't need to go jump in on day one that you decide you're interested in product, jump ship and change the product. Like, let's take the time ask the questions, find out the good and the bad, find out what it's like for different people even, because different people have different experiences and they all come with a different story about how they got into product and, and things like that. So the patience has also been a key player in our work. I'm glad you brought that up because one of my questions, and you might have a different <laughs> answer to this, but I, when I ri- originally wrote this question, I was kind of thinking the patience thing, but what is one of the biggest challenges that you've experienced during this process of coaching? Because it's, it's not all glam. It's not all fun and unicorns. I mean, there's real challenges that come along with any reinvention. Mm-hmm. So can you share a little bit about the challenges that you've experienced? Yes. Aside from patience (laughs) and learning, practicing that, I think one of my biggest challenges, which I also am still working on, is finding the right pace. Mm -hmm. Because you said like this, working with a career coach isn't all glam. It is hard work. It's just taken up energy. It takes up mental space. It does take up some time, but I would say mostly energy and mental space for me, especially when we were back at, you know, month one of coaching, I had to remind myself I was in a marathon. I wasn't trying to make all of these changes and get to the next, you know, step, whether it's just like building the personal brand and getting conversations with people in the time span of two weeks. I was in a marathon. Like this was, this is months that we're working together and then even years to go beyond that. And so finding the right pace, which different months have been at a different pace. Like some months I'm like, Karen, there's a lot going on in my life here. I'm only going to focus on maybe this one or two things that we've been talking about because I learned if I go too fast, I get overwhelmed. And if I go too slow, I get impatient. So we're trying to figure out, the right pace to move along and then adjusting it with everything else going on in life. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. And it's funny because I remember one month you were like, Karen, we got to go faster. I want to work these things in parallel. Let's go. Let's go. And then the next month it was like, wait, slow down, hold the phone. Like, okay, maybe this is too fast. But I hope also that people listening kind of take away with this that, right, 
if you have a great coach, they're going to ebb and flow with you. They're going to be flexible. And ultimately, yes, we want to push you. Yes, we want to give you stretch goals. But we also know that this is reality and we want this to be comfortable for you so that you are, we're ultimately here to serve you, right? To help you get where you want to go in a timely fashion. So I hope you felt that I've been like, okay, yeah, let's ebb and flow as needed. You have a hundred percent let me dictate the pace, which I think fits so well with the board of directors I have set up. You know, I, I still have to have the ownership over my life. I'm not going to put responsibility on you for my life. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but I've been able to come to you with anything and also so much grace that you're like, yeah, we'll slow down. Yep. We can speed up. And you are flexible and able to ebb and flow with my changes of the pace. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. So let's talk about maybe one exercise or tactic, something really tangible that you've used that maybe we could invite others to try today if they're in a similar situation. Yeah, I maybe have two. Sure. And this all relates back to designing your days that you enjoy living, something that you are excited to wake up to that also feels like a breath of fresh air and helps you catch your breath if you feel like you're running or drowning. And so one option, I am a big fan of journaling. So both of these kind of have a journaling theme to them. One option is to think about your vacation self and what do you enjoy on vacation? And what can you bring in to your day to day? And that's kind of what I would recommend to anybody who's like, I don't even know where to start of what I want to do in my days. Like, how do I, where do I even begin? And so think about your vacation self. What do you enjoy? And for me, it's like, okay, I enjoy waking up, going to get a workout in, and then walking to a coffee or a smoothie shop, and then coming back to our Airbnb and maybe making breakfast with the family, you know, getting really specific about your vacation self and then see what you can bring in. So I'm like, I hear that, you know, come out of my mouth. I hear myself say it and I think, oh, well, I can go to a workout and then go get coffee. That is a very easy thing. And I'm not doing that every single day, but it's something that I can definitely bring in week to week or something Mm -hmm. to look forward to. Or if I really enjoy going out to dinner and trying new restaurants on vacation, like why not go out to dinner on a Wednesday night? I used to be someone who I needed a reason if I was going to do anything like fun, there had to be a reason behind it. And I just laugh so hard because I'm like, it's Tuesday and I feel like going out to dinner. Why not? Exactly. Why not? Yes, I had a really close friend just challenge me. She's like, no, you you can go out to dinner just because you want to. And it was like mind blowing because I was such in this trap of like, oh, it needs to be a birthday or a award or something like it goes back to have I, you know, worked enough to get this dinner out? And the answer is no. Have you rested enough to do your most important work? And so that thinking about your vacation self and maybe how you could bring in one or two things into your day or week is my tip number one. Love it. And then tip number two, we kind of mentioned at the beginning of this is the practice that I really enjoyed using is my evening journaling practice that truly helps my mind calm down. And this was, I started this when I was still in the director role, when I was having just crazy long days and coming home feeling pumped with cortisol in my (laughs) veins and just not even knowing how to like release the cortisol. And so this journaling practice is super simple. It can take less than five minutes, but I open up my journal, I write today's date, and then I write, today I smiled when, and I fill in the blank, just one moment where I smiled. And it helps me think about the day a little bit and then find that single, even if it was just a five second moment where I smiled and that was the best thing in the day, I can still write it down. And then the next line is tomorrow I'm looking forward to, and I fill in the blank and it helps me just calm my brain down before going to bed, get a good night's sleep 
and remind myself that there's good things in every day. Even if you're ending it on a really low note, you can take yourself back to a moment of your day that you smiled and that you felt some enjoyment. I love that because I think so many people, right, myself included, because we're coaches and we we love talking about gratitude, but what I love to do is take that next step and connect how do you actually practice gratitude? And I think what you just shared is a very practical way to practice gratitude. And maybe you don't even call it that. You might not even think that, oh, I'm intentionally practicing gratitude, but that's exactly what you're doing when you're looking for that moment where you smiled. Of course. I know. I laugh because I did, they say they, you know, specialists and right. the articles say that gratitude is so good for you. So, you know, I was like, okay, I should practice gratitude. I'm like, well, I'm thankful for my bed. Well, I'm thankful for the food that I got to eat today, but I didn't feel any of that. Like, sure. I could make a list to say like, yeah, I'm thankful I have a car to drive, but those things just didn't resonate as much. And so when I think about the moment when I smiled today, it really drops me in to that moment again. And so I get to go and like relive that moment. And that is what gives me the actual feeling of gratitude. That is so cool. I hope everyone is going to try this. You know, I love to make this show as practical as possible. So you have something to implement. So for those of you that choose to accept the challenge tonight, when you go to bed, I want you to try this journaling exercise where you write down when you smiled and one thing that you're looking forward to for the next day. So thanks for our little bonus tip there, because I think that one is going to really hit home for a lot of people. But I love it. It's truly been life changing for me and I share it far and wide to anybody who will listen. It's been amazing way to end my day. Yeah, I love that. But one more question before we kind of get to your final answer, one, you know, final question that I have for you. I could talk to you all day. This is so fun. But I'm curious, as you were thinking about hiring a coach, what was it that specifically drew you to me and had you hire me to coach you through this? I am so glad you asked this question <laughs> because I was searching for women who worked with women in corporate technology jobs. So that was kind of my first search criteria. And I found you on a group a Facebook group that is for women in tech. And I just kind of did a quick search, career coaching to see who people were talking about, who people were referring to type thing. And then I looked at your website and I was like, great, she has consultation phone calls. Let's book one. <laughs> and so I booked it. I think this was like January 5th or something. It was at the very beginning yes. of the year. And then I listen to your podcast because I wanted to hear you speak. I wanted to hear what energy you had and kind of your fundamental coaching thoughts and loved the energy that you brought in podcasts. I was like, this is someone I can talk to. <laughs> like I could talk to her multiple times a week. And then we had our phone call and you solved the problem right then and there that I was facing. I mean, I think it was a 20 minute phone call, 15 minute phone call, maybe. It was 45 and minutes, but it I, probably felt like 15. Oh, wait, it went really fast. Okay, good. I'm glad you added that clarity. It went so fast, but you solved a problem that I had right then and there. So I got off the phone with you and I told my husband, like, okay, I'm ready to pay her. We're sending her the money. But of course, we like crunched some numbers, talked about like, why this is worth it, some ROI mm -hmm. stuff. And then I booked with you because I just connected so much and loved the energy and the fact that you solved one of my problems in our literal first 45 minutes of meeting each other, like done deal. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And that is the value of having those consultation calls. You know, it is an opportunity to get to know each other and to solve an immediate issue if there is one and then make a game plan for going forward. So if any of you are listening and you have not booked an edit your life jumpstart call yet, what are you waiting for? Go sign up for one. There's no pressure. I mean, did you feel pressured at any point? No, no, it was so informational too. And just to ask questions because I'd never worked with a career coach even. Yeah. I was like, what is this? What, what do you do? <laughs> How do you help me? And it was great. And I feel lucky that 
it just, we hit it off from day one. Yeah. I'm a big believer of the universe. They always put the right people in front of you at the right time. And so Mm -hmm. it just so happened that I was in that group. You were in that group. You were searching. I mean, it was just meant to be, you know, that's how I look. I agree. Yeah. And I want to share just one quick other story that's probably one of my favorite conversations that we had during our our coaching thus far. And we were talking about like your ideal day and you were talking about how you love going for coffee and you want to come back and then have a healthy breakfast and then maybe do a couple hours of work and then take a nice lunch and go for a walk and come back, maybe do another hour or two of work. And then you were like, but I don't know, is that even working that hard enough? Like, shouldn't I be working harder? And is that even possible? And I go, you just described my life. Like, that's what I do. I just work a couple of hours in the morning, take a nice little break. Like after this, when we get done recording, I'm going to go pick up my boys from school. We're going to go have a little impromptu end of the year, school year lunch. And then I'll come back and I've got like one call this afternoon and then I'm done for the day. Like, calling it a day. And you were so mind blown, like for real? Oh, that's okay. And I think sometimes that's the benefit also of coaching and working with somebody who also has not only worked with lots of other clients and can bring in things from that other clients are doing, but also has gone the journey herself and reinvented her own life is like, you just have this whole perspective shift and don't even realize things that seem impossible or not feasible actually are totally doable. So true. That was a mind blowing conversation for me. Cause I do remember I was there. I was like, I will do this and then this and then that, but I'm not really sure if that's doable. And you, your response was, that is literally what I did today. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Yeah. Stop. We need to stop right there. Go back. What? <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. So yeah, so big perspective shifts. You're still in the works right now of exploring some other opportunities inside your current organization. Mm -hmm. It's been awesome to see the amazing support that you've had from the male leaders. They have been stepping up, sponsoring you, putting in good words to help open some doors. And again, that is just such a healthy sign of a good leadership and what all women deserve in the workplace. So I'm, I'm so glad you've been having that experience and I've been here to guide you along the process. So true. Could not have said it better. I feel really thankful for having you to be my sounding board and having just great conversations with people, my manager and other people at the company that are, feel like they're, you know, looking out for growth of the individual and also fitting in where can we problem solve for the company and who are the best people to put in the best positions for various things across the company. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited for you. The sky's not even the limit. You're totally going to crush whatever you do next. And I'm just excited I get to be on the journey with you. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. You're so welcome. So last word goes to you. What would you say to the woman listening right now that knows she wants to make a change, but just doesn't know how to get started? Well, probably book a consultation phone call with you. I mean, <laughs> yes. Me, number but... <laughs> one. <laughs> Thank but, you. And then, yeah. I mean, it, it's been incredible. And just be thinking too about who's on your board of directors. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't need a big board, you just need a few people that are in your corner that can help be a sounding board and then take time to really be intentional about you know, like I said, start with your vacation self to add some enjoyment, get yourself feeling like you have rest and that you can breathe freely and things will start to snowball from there. Once you're feeling rested and you've got a few people in your court, it's going to snowball and propel you forward. Oh, 1000% wise words. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day today to be here and share all of your wisdom with our listeners. And it's just so fun to see you again. And I'm so glad that I get to work with you. So thank you. Likewise. Thank you, Karen. This was a great conversation. Oh, I'm so glad you had fun. All right. Well, until next week, everyone stay fabulous. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're inspired to take action by committing to one of the tips or strategies we talked about in today's episode. And if you want accountability and support, I've got your back. 
Join my private Facebook group, Successful Working Women Rocking Reinvention today. You'll find a community of like-minded women waiting to support you, exclusive content and helpful resources to ensure you succeed. Lastly, if you loved this episode, do me a favor and be sure to leave a review. Together, we can encourage more women to live their purpose. See you next time.